Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. John Coleman and I get to speak to John Mariani, the virtual gourmet, and uh, just a guy we love talking to. And very virtual. Very virtual. Hey, yeah. John, uh, I know you uh, are a frequenter of uh, restaurants, large and small, fine and otherwise. And uh, I recently went to a, a restaurant, something stuck in my head about the uh, the menu, I think on the back of the menu, talking about the chef and blah, 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 blah. And it was, uh, you know, only the finest ingredients. We only buy the best. And of course, I know that, you know, in a good restaurant, the chef literally does go out or somebody goes out in the morning and buys, you know, to the market and buys the fresh produce. But, you know, there's only so much of, quote, the best. <laughs> they can't all they can't uh -oh. all be buying the best, uh, can they? I'm glad you brought this up. I didn't know you were going to ask me about this, but let's get into it. Okay. All right. Many, 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 many chefs say we only buy the best. We only buy the finest, uh, which costs more money than the less best. <laughs> but a lot yes. of them are buying the less best, and they're not so terrific. And they're outright lying about what they are claiming. Okay. No. Uh, yeah, you can't believe it. Um, let me give you a, an anecdote. Years ago in France, the late, uh, great Joel Robuchon was a French chef. He was very, very, very picky. He had three Michelin stars for his restaurant. Um, he was uh, called out back because the uh, raspberry guy came to deliver the fruit for him to make his uh, cuisine with his raspberry tarts. And he probably had about I don't know, 10, 12 flats of raspberry on the cart. And Robuchon, all from the same guy, all from the same place for every guy. And Robuchon says, we, oui. no, 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 absolutely no. We, oui. we, oui. okay, I take these four, okay? Now, they all looked exactly the same to me, but he really was choosing the best of the best because they don't bring him anything less than the best. But he was a bit getting the best of the best. And then uh, on the other side of the Atlantic, uh, the late restaurateur Tony Cortese, who owned a wonderful Italian restaurant in Bronx called Amarigo's, because he was not a steakhouse but wanted the very finest steaks, he would go down to what was then the, the great meatpacking district in New York on 14th Street or 14th Street, and he would go into the best of the purveyors down there who supplied Peter Luger and Smith and Walensky. And he would, he had a guy there he knew, and he would give him every week $50 to give him the 20 best steaks he had. Okay, because that's about how many he was going to sell all week. But he still wanted them to be as best as the best steakhouse in New York. Okay, how many chefs like Robuchon or Tony are there who can do that, who can afford to take the time, who can afford even to pay the money. Um, so that when you say, when a chef says, especially an absentee chef who is never in his restaurant, you know, Robuchon went on to have restaurants in all over the world, so he was not picking out the raspberries every every day, uh, everywhere. And uh, Tony and Amerigo is no longer with us. But now when, uh, for, let's, let's take caviar, and I think we talked about this once, once before, so I'll say, very briefly, that the best caviar in the world has always been acknowledged as being out of the Caspian Sea, which has Russian and um, Iranian fisheries. Uh, they were fished out more than 10 years ago. They come from the sturgeon, the beluga sturgeon, and it was, uh, it was just fished out, and the, the species had to come back. So it was banned to this day. So you cannot get true Russian or Iranian caviar. What you find, however, on a menu is Russian, it will say Russian caviar, Iranian caviar, but on the label it means Russian style or made from beluga from China in the Russian style. But it ain't Russian caviar and it ain't Iranian caviar. There isn't any. There simply isn't any. So when you see caviar, and there's still 
um, and it's being it's being farmed in Uruguay and and, and Madagascar. It, it's a little ridiculous um, uh, at this point, and it doesn't taste so hot. They're still charging two hundred dollars an ounce for this stuff. Yeah. Um, Wagyu beef. I think we may have talked about this before. Wagyu in Japanese means beef. That's all it means. It doesn't mean high quality beef. It just means beef. Kobe beef, which is from around Kobe, was a special kind of animal that they bred to be have very, very, very great deal of intermuscular fat, which you can see as these streaks and, and mottling of, of fat. And most of it came from renowned prefecture, as they call them in Japan, especially Miyazaki A5. And Miyazaki A5 to this day sells about 90% of all of its beef um, is either consumed in uh, in Japan or outside of Japan um, to uh, places like um, uh, Singapore where people pay the price for it. Like 1% goes to the rest of the world. 1% of a tiny little amount that is actually uh, made. It's estimated there are 30,000 head of pure Wagyu Kobe style cattle in the entire U.S. That's one that's 0.29 percent, less than one percent of all American beef cattle. And yet I don't know of a steakhouse around in the United States at this point, not one that high quality steakhouse that does not claim it's serving. We serve wag. We have Prefecture A5 uh, Kobe. Uh, and yet and you can go online and find it. So either those old Kobe producers now have hundreds of thousands of of these very, very special rare cattle roaming around the uh, hillsides there and supplying the world with millions and millions of tons of this stuff, or it's, it's bogus. Right. Um, another one, wild game. I saw, I was uh, at a restaurant the other day and it had said wild salmon on the menu. Well, it's not really wild. It's Faroe Island salmon. Faroe Island salmon is probably the best you can buy because they keep the it is a farm, and they put salmon in these big, big, huge nets. The nets are out in the sea, but the salmon cannot get away, and they can't swim, and they don't spawn and so forth. They're eating more or less what is there. In a regular farm, these things are eating pellets, like dog food, cat food pellets, okay? So this is not bad salmon at all. Wild? No. It is not. These things are not... You know, cascading up the the water falls in, in in Seattle. These are not Copper River King salmon and so forth. So when you see wild salmon, um, when you see Dover sole, of which there is only a tiny amount every year from around. It's not even around Dover in England. It's it's a, just a misnomer because the fattest fish came from the coldest waters of the North Sea, and they call them Dover sole because they were the most expensive in the market. Well, today go to any good seafood house. They all got Dover sole. We only serve the finest Dover sole. It comes in overnight from Dover, which is bologna. <laughs> you know, maybe their bologna is the highest quality. Black truffles, white truffles. You can only get white truffles from Italy in quality white truffles, which are, which are hunted down by dogs in the fall. This year they were going for $2,000 a pound. $2,000 a pound. So if you go to a restaurant and they say white truffles for your pasta, fifty, sixty dollars, uh, which is a lot of money, um, <laughs> you got to question where those things are from. I've had summer truffles from the down on down under in Australia, which are not bad. I've had Chinese black truffles, which are not bad, but they're nothing like the Perigord truffles. So if they just say black truffles, white truffles, they're buying Chinese or Israeli uh, white truffles, um, stone crabs, um, uh, stone crabs, uh, bay scallops, which are the sweetest scallops in the world. Bay scallops are being sold to fish mongers for $30 a pound. That means they have to sell them, if they can get them, for $50, $60 a pound. So if you see we have New England bay scallops and they're selling an order for $30 for a dish of them, not a pound, but let's say a quarter of a pound, how can they possibly do that? You know, so you gotta really wonder when you see the best and the finest everywhere. It's just can't be true, and is not true. 
Many, as you said, John, on the back of the menu say, we buy our products, we buy our game, we buy our eggs or whatever from this farm, that farm. And that's a good indication because they are going to be good quality. But the best and the finest is, um, is questionable. It's like uh, buying you know, the finest cashmere sweater. Well, yeah. how, many, how many of the finest cashmere sweaters can be produced? Yet you go to a store, Ralph Lauren or something, and well, they go, oh, we don't have it in your side, but we can get it from the other store. They got tens of thousands of them. You know? So um, caveat emptor. Yeah, and, you know, listen, a, a little hyperbole is fine, but I much prefer, as you said, when the when the chef uh, said, we, we source, here's the local farm we source from. That, that's to good. me, that's a, a better indication of quality, high quality. And and I guess the, the chef's uh, commitment to to fine quality than the hyperbole of, only the finest, only the best. Yeah, or, also, I, as I, you say, the, you know things like Kobe beef. I would yeah. think that also, uh, or perhaps uh, with uh, the explosion, uh, because uh, 100, 200 years ago there were, weren't tens of thousands of fine restaurants. There were much less of them. So as there are more and more fine restaurants, or even the good local restaurants that wouldn't be considered you know, a Michelin star kind of restaurant. Uh, the, I guess the real test of it all is not what they get, but do they deliver the same quality over and over and over again? And th they figure out what's the best they can put together so that they can give you a consistent product. Uh, that's absolutely true. So if you find that the menu in January is exactly uh, the same as the menu in July, uh, where are those asparagus, cherries, strawberries, yeah. Dover sole, bay scallops coming from. Do you have stone crabs in, in, in every 12 months of the year? Um, no, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, let's face it, uh, besides what we're talking about, the world has gotten smaller. Mm -hmm. And yes, we can get fresh fruits in January from South America. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not quite the same, you know? It's not quite the same, and this, this, uh, uh, as, as Art suggested, there are more and more restaurants which do, no question about it, serve better quality. I mean, let's face it, 50, 60 years ago, you went into a very good restaurant, and a lot of the peas and carrots were coming out of a can, mm -hmm. and the photographer was coming out of a can. Um, now, they can't get away with that, but you just have to be wary as ever that the finest cashmere may not be the finest cashmere. And the foie gras is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not from France, but it's from China, and it's not going to be the same. You make the, one thing, the one thing I would like uh, to inform our audience, though, is that irrespective of the time of the year, or how far we are from various places, we always have only the best quality guests. And John Mariani is a perfect example That's right. of, of that perfection. Only the best. Only the best. Well, I am often disappointed, but I'm always on the lookout for it. And I got to say um, that more often than not, and I pick my targets and pick my places, more often than not, I think you can get a better meal anywhere in the United States or Italy or France than you ever could before, mm. ever. Yeah. More places. I mean, people say, is there really any place to eat in Atlanta? Can you really get a good meal in Dallas? Absolutely. Yeah. I live in Westchester County. We have probably, you know, Westchester County is a suburb of, uh, of New York City where you're going to find the best of the best available. <laughs> but up here in Western, Westchester County, I have 12, 15 restaurants I would recommend anybody go to um, for the quality of the food. So mm -hmm. we're, we're blessed everywhere from Cleveland to, you know, to Los Angeles and back and forth. Yep. Great discussion, John. Uh, always fun talking to you about uh, food and the world, uh, the culinary world. Is that a good way to put it? Culinary world. I'm going to go downstairs and open a bottle of uh, Dr. Ray, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Ray Brown's celery tonic. Mm -hmm. Nice Campbell's soups out of a can. And only the soda. only the best sodas at the well, I'm going Mariani up to my garden house. And I'm going to pick only the best. Yeah. See you soon, John. Take care.
For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.